and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to work on the open wave shawl together. Now this is a really interesting shawl. Now when I saw it in the photo I thought okay well it's nice but then when I saw it in person what a completely different element to it. I'm hoping that's coming across on your screen right now. This is one of those surprise projects where in person it looks more amazing than it does in the photograph. I know I'm probably not even allowed to say that but it does. So what makes this kind of shot amazing is that it's a transitional yarn. So I've used Treasure here by Boutique, Red Heart Boutique. But in the model that we had in the mannequin in the, in the opening credits we would have shown you this one here. This is James D. Brett Marble Chunky. We used two and a half balls of it for the entire um, shawl. Now you will notice that in the model if, of itself, in the pattern itself, is that she has no tassels. It's just looking like this. So my assistant Colleen, she actually did the sample and she says, Mikey, she goes, it doesn't feel finished to me. Can I add my own embellishments to it, to what I think it needs? So I said, well it's creativity, it's crochet, you know, add what you want. So she came up with adding tassels to three of the four sides. So she did ones on either sides and then the bottom. And I will tell you, those tassels really do kick this up a whole nother level. So in today's project, I'm going to show you how to work on this. And it's very simple. And then I'm going to take it even further and show you how Colleen finished it doing the tassels all the way around and because she's out of tassels and the tassels are quite um, lengthy as far as the amount of yarn it's going to change your yarn quantities for your particular pattern so you just got to be aware of that. But if for from start to finish she used about 500 uh, grams of James C. Uh, Brett Chunky Marble which is two and a half balls. So let's get started right now. So to get started I'm going to be using James C. Brett for this particular sample. This is another color line for that same yarn. It is wonderful, absolutely just amazing for summertime if you're interested in that. So you're going to love me now because what I've done is that I went through the pattern and figured out what the stitch counts are so that you can change the size. So maybe you want something bigger, maybe you want something smaller. The secret is the number seven. So let's uh, begin. I'm going to show you how to do the foundation uh, chain to start because you're going to need to start it in a just slightly different way. To start off with we're going to do a slip knot as we normally would and we use a little bit of an extra long tail here so I can use a darning needle to hide it in. No big deal. So let's begin. It says in row number one it says work 155 FSC. That's short for foundation single crochet. So this is not just a typical chain. This is a foundation chain and because of that we have to work it out. Now I'm going to do a sample. So here's the trick here. The multiples are seven. So what we want to do is that we want to keep everything at seven. So I'm not going to crochet 155 of these things. I'm going to go in groups of seven because it makes it easier for me. So it's just because I'm going to lose count. I know I will. So what you can just do is once you get this chain done, you can determine if it's long enough and as long as you have your groups of seven then you're good. So how to do this, the foundation is that we're going to pull through one and pull through again. So we have two, we just did two chains. We are going to come into the first one that you came out of. Okay, we're just going to grab one string only, pull through and pull through. So that is classified as one foundation chain. So to do the next one, do you see how there's two strings there? We go to the uh, second one over, pull the string and pull through again. So that was two. So we go to the second one over, pull through, pull through again. So that's three. So second, pull through, that's four. Go to the second one over and five. And what this is doing is it's putting stitches on both sides of here so that you have the most amazing chain to start with. So that was number five. So to do more, so I want to keep it in groups of seven. So I'm going to do six and seven. So what I want to do is I want to, you can either go the 155 or you can just go in groups of seven, whatever makes sense for you. So I'm going to do this again. So one and I'm counting. Two, three, four, that's five, six, and seven. And so did you notice how I counted on the second pull through? Because basically you're creating on both sides. So what I want you to do is create the length that you want and you can keep it in groups of seven or go the, the, the pattern instructions and when we come back what I need you to do at the very end of the chain is that you have to add in one extra 
um, foundation chain. So you're gonna do groups of seven and then just add one extra at the very end and then we're gonna capture the pattern from that point. So at the end of your chain, if you have not added one after you've done your groups of seven, or if you can just continue to follow the 155, it's the same thing, is that at the very end, you'll just add one extra. So if you've done 155, as per the instructions, you've already done this. If you're only going in groups of seven, you must add one. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna move up to a row number two, and it says to chain one and turn. So what we're gonna just do is just chain one and turn. Here we go. So essentially it's going to be really, really simple. So we're going to single crochet into the very first two stitches. So one and two. Very easy. And now it says to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we want to skip four chains on here. So one, two, three, four. Go to the fifth for a single crochet. Like that and then do two more single crochets. So these ones always in the middle will always just only be three singles in a row. So let's begin to do that again. You've already know how to do this already. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we come in and then we skip the four. So one, two, three, and four. Come into the fifth for a single crochet. And we do make sure that we do three single crochets here. So you're going to do that all the way across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we skip again four. So one, two, three, and four. Coming out to that one and put three. So now I'm coming up to the end of my chain already. So this is where your chain will be a lot longer because you could probably do a real sample is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And if your chain is right, one, two, three, and four, you will end up with two single crochets at the very end of your particular project to put in. And I do. So that does mean that I kept it in groups of seven going all the way across. Now you're going to notice that this is a lot more looser than the, the foundation chain that we started off with. When we go to finish this off, we're also going to be making the same tension on the very last row. So if you're thinking it looking off right now, it's really not. It's part of the pattern. So let's uh, turn around and let's do the next part. Okay, we're going to move on to row number three. And this is where it gets really simple. So the hard stuff is really over. So we want to chain one first to start and then we're going to double or single crochet into the very first two single crochets that you see. So one and two. So one into each. Now here is the seven of chaining of seven. So you're going to put seven singles here. Seven single crochets. So that was two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now that you have your seven, even if it's not reaching over there, it will pull over on its own. So don't need to worry about that. So now you have three single crochets here. So you're going to put in one single crochet into each one of the three. So that will happen every time you come across this particular row. So here's your next group of seven. So we want to put seven singles here into around that chain. Three, four, five, six and seven. And then here's your next group of three. So one into each. One, two, and three. And then here's your next seven. So there's going to be seven singles there. This is three. This is four, five, six, and seven. And then we have our next group of three singles. So that means that one into each, one single crochet into each. And then here's your next seven. Seven. And you're just going to keep going across and then on the final two you will put one into each one of the final two. 
So you're gonna notice at this point and it's gonna be really obvious that you're gonna say well that doesn't look right because the bottom is really kind of even if you stretch it these loops kind of look out of alignment. You have to trust me these will work out. It, it will stretch out once you get a past a few more rows. To move up to the next row we're gonna turn around and this will be row number four. Now row number four you have to understand that these loops here don't just sit on top of each other so the next big loop will be right in the middle of the two. Therefore that our starting has to be slightly different. So what we're just gonna do we've already turned our work and we're just immediately going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So in the rules of crochet according to the instructions this is a treble plus there is three chains added to this and if you understand that it just totally makes sense. So what you need to do is that you need to switch over and you need to come over to the third one over. Now you can either count to the fourth one over or you can just look at the group of seven and determine which is the third one from the, from the arch. And then you're gonna put it in a single crochet into the next three once you determine that first one. It's more of a visual thing than anything. So now you're going to chain your seven. So now we're creating the foundation uh, for this particular uh, level. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so we just come over here. You can either count the stitches or you can just look for the third one over. Okay, once it's in the arch just look for the third one and throw in a single crochet into that one plus the next two. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, we automatically just come down. I'm gonna look for the third one over in the arch and throw in a single crochet into the next three. So one, two, three, four, five, whoops, four, five, six, and seven. And again, I'm looking for the third one over in the arch. So it says you can count it but if you can see it why count it right? You can just do it. So in the very end of this type of row you have to chain three, one, two, and three and you need to treble down into the very first single crochet that's in the line. So we're gonna wrap and wrap. So we have a wrap twice. We're going into the first one and we're going to treble ourselves all the way back. So remember how we chain seven in the very beginning even though it doesn't look the same it's actually doing the same by the time we come across back in the other direction. So let's move up to your next row. So let's turn our work and we're moving up to row number five. Row number five is really simple again. So we're just going to chain one to start and we're going to single crochet into the top of the treble that we started off with. Now normally we would chain seven when it comes to these big ones here but this is classified as a half. So that makes totally sense. So we're only going to single crochet around that section three times because it's only a half. And now we're going to single crochet into the, the middle here. So one into each one. So there's three in the middle so there's three single crochets. Okay and now here is your chaining of seven. So it's single crochet all the way across. So you already know how to do this. So this is three, four, five, six, and seven. So you're just gonna chain your or single crochet your seven in those and then add it, your single crochets where you need to and go all the way across and I'll meet you back up at the end of this line because you have a half on this side to deal with when we get there. Okay, I'm now coming up on the very end and all I have here is that we have to treat this like it's a half. So we're just going to single crochet three times around here and then in the fourth chain you can just eye it up as well. You're going to single crochet in and basically that locks that from being able to shift when you do that because when you crochet around a chain just like you did those can just move at any point but as soon as you go into a chain you've just now locked it into position. So that was row number five. Let's move up to row number six. When you go to finish this project we always have to finish off on a row number five just like you're seeing it right now. So if you're ever thinking about finishing this so if you want to make it bigger or smaller you always have to finish it so that the next row that we're going to start to finish will be going up after this. So it always have to be after the halves are done just like this. Let's turn around and go on row number six. So 
let's turn our work here. We're going on row number six. You already know how to do this row. We've already done it before and it's just for a repeat pattern. They always say it again. So we're going to chain up one and then we're going to single crochet into the very first two that we have. One and two and now we chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then we just immediately come to the next arch. Just look for the third one over and we are going to single crochet in to the next three. And so you want to continue to do that all the way across. So continue to do that. So chain seven and then continue to go on the arch. And when we come back, I'll just review one more time. When you get to the end of this row, remember that the final two single crochets are yours to be able to secure in. Okay, so we've reached all the way across. So essentially what's happening down here is happening here. So let's turn our work and this is when we start repeating the pattern again. So th basically to start is just chaining a one and then single crochet into the next two. And now you have the chain here. So that means that you're single crocheting seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And continue to do that. I have to do seven again, <laughs> number seven. And essentially you just, oh my, and seven and then the middle here we single crochet. So we're just going to continue to go along in this pattern. So when we're finishing up this pattern, once we decide that we're doing the edging, we always have to finish up with row number five of being our last. And it is so important because the, uh, the um, shaw will not stay in balance if you're going to deviate from that. So that's just a helpful tip for you. So carry on and what I want you to do is that when I come back, I'm going to be finishing off where I'm doing one of these layers one more time and then I'm going to show you how to finish and then I'm going to show you how Colleen finished hers. So we're going to do the finishing row. So this is what you would need to do once you've decided that it's big enough. So we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and we're, recre we're recreating this half that we have down here. So we immediately just come over. You can just count it over if you want but we come to the third um, stitch in the arch and do three single crochets like so and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then we just immediately come to the next arch and look for the third one over. So we want to do this whole row just like this and when we come back I'm going to show you how to go back across this row and then we'll do the finishing off techniques. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'll show you how to do the finishing techniques in just a moment. Now we're coming up to the end of that same row. So one, two, and three and just like we did down here, it'll be a treble. So we wrap and wrap and go right into the beginning and come back up. So let's turn our work and finish off this row and this will kick it up. So let's do it. So we're just going to chain one first. We single crochet into the top of the treble and because this is only a half loop compared to what it is down here, we are just going to do three single crochets there and then one into each one of the next. One, two, and three. Okay, and now we're going to, you, this is your seven. So we're going to have one single, or seven single crochets in there. So continue to do this row as you normally would and when we come back, we're actually going to do the finishing edges just like it is to be able to make it look just like the starting. So we're coming to the end of that row and essentially we just put in three singles in the end because it's only classified as a half and to about the fourth chain over we will single crochet to lock that position in. So let's uh, begin to do the edging. So this is what it will look like. So you will have to make sure that you have a half here when you go to finish so that you can make the other side look brilliant and this is essentially what it will have and once you uh, stretch things out you will notice that everything will line properly. So let's uh, begin the edging row number one. Okay, let's begin the edging. We've just turned our work and essentially we're just going to chain up one. And it says to single crochet into the next two. So this would be like it normally would be to start. 
one and two. So the first two are like that. So you will have noticed here that this here, do you see how this is arching up but this stays flat? Well what we're about to do is that the other side is gonna remain flat like that. So in order to do that we have to chain only four. So not seven but four. So one, two, three and four and we immediately just come to the next arch to the third one up or you can count it if you wish and just do a single crochet in. One, two, and three. So the difference on this uh, row versus the other one, see how it's more straight across? It's just like it is on the bottom. So we're gonna do one, two, three, and four. Go to the next arch, the third one up, and slam in some single crochets into the next three. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. So it's a very easy way to finish the edging off on this. So we just still have one more row to go because just like you have nice thick um, lines here, if you leave it like this you're gonna have a really thin line. So we wanna thicken that up. So when we come back we're gonna be able to do that. So just skipping over to the four. And so we're gonna come up onto the very edge right here. And so then the last two are going to be your single crochets in. Like this. Okay, so that's how you do that. So let's turn our work and finish this project off. So what we're gonna just do now is chain one. We've already turned it and it says single crochet into the next two. Okay, so these are the two that we have. They're right on the edge and essentially we're just gonna thicken up what we already have. So we're going to put in four single crochets into the chaining four space. So normally we would have done seven but this is different because it's the edge and so then we have our three in a row of singles so we're just gonna single crochet those in. And here's your next four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, you have your three again and you just keep working across your row like that. Okay, here's your next four. One, two, three, and four. Here's your next group of three. So one, two, and three. Okay, and here's your next group of four. So one, two, three, and four. And then you put in, the, you have two here, so you're just gonna put one into each. So a single crochet and a single crochet. So this would be how you've actually finished your project. And as you can see, then you have a really nice, beautiful, project to go and everything is in alignment and you start questioning in the middle whether it's actually aligned or not but once you get it a certain way that you can actually start seeing that. So when we come back I'm going to show you how Colleen did her tassels. So if you want to do tassels you can either fasten off and using a different yarn but I'm just going to leave it on just for the sake of argument and essentially what she's done here is that she's put tassels every two stitches so every other stitch. So how she did it is that she chained 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So right now she has double crocheted herself um, all the way back but she's actually added more stitches to create the actually ruff, uh, ruffling that we see. So she's just went from the third from the hook and she just started to half double crochet herself. So one, so she's put a half double crochet into uh, two of them into each one of the chains as she's going back toward the project. So one and two. And we're just coming all the way back. Now she did admit that this does take a lot longer than you would hope it want it would but it's one of those parts of finishing that it sets it from a rest if you spend the time and do it. Um, it does really look totally amazing. It look hopefully that when you saw the photograph that you were totally convinced on it as well because it really does look incredible. Okay, so we're just going to single. Now because we're putting the half doubles in, we're putting two into each one, it's gonna cause the natural twirl to happen which is kind of like the whole charm of this particular uh, uh, project. So we're just coming back all the way. Throughout this tutorial my yarn um, ball has been snagging on something. It's driving me crazy. Okay, so we're going to half doubles into each coming all the way back. So we have our last one. Okay, 
Okay? And so basically when she came back she just a single crocheted herself into where she was started and then she single crocheted into the very next stitch and then she single crocheted again. And then she started with 12 again. So basically just like what I did here you're gonna chain up your 12 and then half from the third from the hook you will half double crochet twice eight each one and it will make these really curly really interesting tassels. So basically on the sides here she just roughed it out. So she just basically what she did the bottom first so she could get an eye on how far the stitching was and then when she did the sides because the, you really can't see the stitch work she just roughly put it in in order for it to make sense. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Join me, join me again for more free patterns and ideas and until then we'll see ya.